Hello, my name is Jim Metrock. I'm president of Obligation Incorporated, a nonprofit organization based in Birmingham, Alabama. I want to talk to you about bus radio. I want to talk to you about the bus radio content review board. Now, when bus radio started to appear before school boards across the country and started to talk to transportation directors trying to get school districts to sign a contract with them. One of their big claims to fame, one of the things that had to influence a lot of school boards was the fact that bus radio had established a content review board. Bus radio told the public that they were so sure of their age-appropriate content that they had established a four-person content review board that would review every song ever played on bus radio and every advertisement. This, uh, this content review board was a four-person uh, uh, board. Uh, one was a child psychologist and one was a school superintendent. And uh, let me read you uh, some examples. Uh, one from the East Coast uh, at Nashua, New Hampshire, where they were trying to get into uh, that school district. Uh, Steve Conley, Bus Radio's sales, uh, national sales manager, was appearing before the board. And in the minutes of that meeting, uh, he was, uh, it's quoted, him, he's quoted as saying, all of our content is subject to our content review board. We have a nationally known child psychologist on this board. We have a school superintendent on this board. This board not only listens to the music being played, but they read the music and listen to the innuendo. Out in California, uh, Steve Conley again uh, was quoted in the uh, Press Enterprise newspaper in Riverside, California, uh, quote, a board which includes a school superintendent and a child psychologist screens the music and ads, and school districts can also request changes, he said. Um, the president of the bus radio, Steve Schulman, uh, was quoted in the New York Times um, as saying this, quote, Bus Radio records its music, music tracks in its studio in Massachusetts. The playlists are approved by a volunteer panel put together by the company, made up of a, of a uh, school superintendent, a child psychologist, and education magazine editors, Mr. Schulman said. Last year, uh, May of uh, 2008, obligation found out that uh, the, the Bus Radio's Content Review Board was a, a, a sham because Bus Radio, as they were trying to uh, fight back a parent's effort to get it kicked out of the Seminole County school system in uh, Florida, and, and the parents were successful, Bus Radio was removed from their county uh, school buses. Uh, in that process, Bus Radio uh, reluctantly published the names of the four members of the Content Review Board because parents were saying there is no such board. And I contacted the child psychologist. You can go on obligation.org and click on Bus Radio and, and, and get to the uh, article we have that lists her, her name and the other names of the, the board members. That's not the significant thing here. But I did uh, correspond with uh, the child psychologist on this board, and this was May of 2008. She wrote me back, quote, I am no longer advising bus radio, but I did meet with an advisory committee one time, and at that time I believed they were doing something that was good. At this time, 
I cannot say anything because I have not worked with them for about two years. That meant she had not worked with bus radio since 2006. She had one meeting. We knew this content review board didn't exist. We contacted, well, we tried to contact the uh, superintendent of education uh, that uh, was listed, and he never responded. Uh, we asked him if he was on this board, how many meetings he went to, uh, and no response. I'm talking to you right now uh, at the end of July as the Federal Communications Commission is uh, investigating and studying uh, bus radio's business model. They are uh, uh, being directed by Congress to issue a report uh, about commercial programming uh, on school buses, which means only bus radio. Uh, and that report uh, hopefully will come out uh, later this year. Um, the FCC asked uh, bus radio several questions, and one of the questions was, uh, uh, concerning uh, the Content Review Board. In uh, er, a letter from uh, Michael Yanoff, uh, Bus Radio's uh, CEO, to the FCC, Yanoff uh, says uh, he doesn't want the names of the uh, members of the Content Review Board to uh, be made public, even though Bus Radio had made those public in May of 2008. Uh, but his reason, one of those reasons for wanting to redact uh, the names of the uh, content review board members was uh, this, quote, the board, the content review board, the board was assembled with the specific purpose of creating guidelines content for bus radio uh, to follow. After the guidelines were created, we dissolved the board. Again, he says, the board was assembled with a specific purpose of creating guidelines content for bus radio to follow. After the guidelines were created, we dissolved the board. There was never a content review board that was going to review content. That's the CEO. He should know. But all the salespeople uh, said something totally different to the public. Uh, how can you mislead the public so blatantly? And why did they name it the Content Review Board if they weren't going to review content? It should have been the Guidelines Board or the Guidelines Creation Committee. But that wouldn't have helped school boards sign on the dotted line. They called it the Content Review Board to mislead decision makers at schools. And if you've got bus radio in your school system, more than likely you were misled into believing that uh, there were people that were going to check the checkers on this. There's nobody uh, on this Content Review Board. There was never anybody. Any time the bus radio had uh, had talked about this, uh, they knew. They had one meeting, evidently, and that was it. And it wasn't to review content. This, bu this uh, bus radio content review board did not review content, and their intention was never to do that. And that is straight from the CEO. He admitted it in July 2009, but unfortunately school systems are now saddled with bus radio. Um, so use this in your school system, bring this up before your school board. Uh, this is one good reason uh, to uh, kick these people to the curb. Uh, you've got to be straight with the public. when you mislead people this badly, you have no business uh, dealing with the public. Thanks for your time.